If the pinnacle technological triumph of the 20th century was landing humanity on the moon, then in the 21st century, the greatest technological feat would be successfully landing humanity on Mars. Elon Musk is famously driven by this vision, asserting that within our lifetime, not only will Mars be colonized, but the groundwork for its inaugural city will commence. But once you've reached the red planet, what comes next? Where will you reside? How will the first Mars base be constructed and established? Join us as we delve into these pressing questions on today's episode of Alpha Tech. When envisioning the Mars dream, minds naturally turn to Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, whose fervent ambition revolves around establishing a city on the Red Planet. This metropolis, designed to sustain itself and accommodate a million inhabitants, marks a pivotal leap toward making humanity a multi-planetary species. Despite extensive discussions about Musk's aspirations, conversations often center on familiar topics like the mechanics of reaching Mars using Starship, fuel transfer methods, and landing procedures. Yet little attention has been paid to the specifics of Musk's envisioned Mars base. What would it actually look like, and what's the most efficient way for SpaceX to create a sustainable and enduring presence on Mars? In a 2021 white paper submitted for the National Academy's Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey, SpaceX outlined its blueprint for the initial Mars mission using Starship. The strategy involves sending uncrewed Starships to Mars serving dual purposes, validating system maturity and readiness, and delivering substantial cargo ahead of human arrival. These missions, likely facilitated by robotics, aim to assess local resources, stage supplies, test long-term operational technologies, and commence infrastructure development, with a propellant plant deemed a critical necessity. Interestingly, SpaceX plans to load even the earliest Mars-bound ships with supplies. Although the cargo may be limited, the initial Martian settlers, launched in groups of 10 to 20 people alongside 100 plus metric tons or around 220,000 or more pounds of cargo, will repurpose surviving starships as pre-established habitats, storage facilities, and raw material sources. Initial cargo shipments prioritize essentials like power, water, and propellant production, alongside the construction of shelters, radiation shielding, and prepared landing pads. As expected, early settlers will likely repurpose purpose the very starships that transported them to Mars as their initial homes on the Red Planet. This innovative approach underscores SpaceX's methodical strategy toward establishing a sustainable presence and paving the way for a human civilization on Mars. However, should events indeed progress in that direction? There exists a divergence of viewpoints on this matter. Some contend that repurposing Starship as a long-term habitat on Mars contradicts its fundamental purpose reusability. Consider a scenario akin to relocating one's family to a new destination and opting to permanently reside in a motorhome. The contention arises from the inefficiency created when a reusable transportation system becomes essentially unusable for any other purpose after being established as living quarters. This perspective challenges the core principle of reusability, a principle that has significantly contributed to SpaceX's past successes, notably the Falcon 9. Moreover, this argument delves into the economic dimension. Advocates for reusing Starship primarily for transportation purposes rather than confining it to a fixed living space on Mars emphasize the potential for a notable reduction in the cost per colonist for upcoming missions. Drawing parallels with the triumph of the Falcon 9, where recurrent use substantially slashed the cost of accessing space, proponents of this perspective advocate for employing a similar approach with Starship. The goal is to maximize the economic efficiency of this pioneering spacecraft. In essence, this viewpoint aligns with SpaceX's overarching philosophy, innovation and progress driven by reusability. This very principle has played a vital role in democratizing access to space, making it more accessible and affordable. 
So if Starship isn't designated for habitation, what strategies will be employed to establish a base on Mars? What outlines the optimal blueprint for a Martian base camp and its initial setup? To embark on this discussion, the foremost consideration revolves around the location SpaceX should select for landing and operations on Mars. The proposition for a Mars base situated in Gale Crater originates from the meticulous deliberations of an international entity, the Space Station Design Studio in Stuttgart, Germany, dedicated to establishing a permanent human presence on the Red Planet. This forward-looking endeavor carefully considers the minute intricacies crucial for the triumph of such a mission, centering particularly on Gale Crater as the ideal locale for this inaugural Mars base. Gale Crater emerges as a strategic choice for various compelling reasons, prompting the organization's strong advocacy for its selection. Notably, the crater has been under the exhaustive scrutiny of the Curiosity rover, Mars' largest and most capable exploration rover for over a decade offering a comprehensive and intimate understanding of the region. This familiarity plays a paramount part in mission planning and risk management, as the wealth of data gathered by Curiosity aids in making informed decisions regarding the deployment of infrastructure and allocation of resources. The allure of Gale Crater surpasses data availability, encompassing its geographical placement and climatic characteristics. Positioned at 5.4 degrees south of Mars' equator, the crater experiences experiences relatively moderate temperatures, reducing the energy requirements for maintaining life support systems, particularly heating. Additionally, the region is believed to house subsurface water, an essential resource indispensable for sustaining a prospective colony. Moreover, the crater's elevated ridges, specifically around the central mountain peak, offer significant protection against radiation, a key consideration for the well-being of Mars settlers. The rationale behind choosing Gale Crater combines comprehensive data, moderate temperatures, temperatures, potential water reservoirs, and inherent radiation protection, collectively forming an optimal environment for establishing a Mars base. Following this, the Space Station Design Studio proposes a meticulously planned sequence of unmanned missions. This mission's primary objective is to establish a sustainable human presence on Mars while prioritizing astronaut safety. Its key components include an orbiter, ground stations, a Mars ascent vehicle, and inflatable habitats. The deployment sequence involves initiating the orbiter and ground stations, which enter a supersynchronous orbit, facilitating an efficient transfer orbit toward Mars. As the Mars Ascent vehicle reaches Mars's sphere of influence, it separates from the cargo and descends into the Martian atmosphere, landing in the designated zone near the Gale volcano. A portion of this assembly's orbit remains stable over Mars, effectively orbiting directly above the landing site. This Positioning is of utmost importance, as once the orbital station, habitat, and cargo are all in place on Mars, the crew can transition to a low Earth orbit in a deep space habitat. This strategic move sets the stage for subsequent phases of the mission, ensuring optimal conditions for continued operations. The low Earth orbit station, whether a starship or an alternative component, serves as the starting point for astronauts to establish a deep space living environment. Once this assembly phase concludes, they commence the real-time assembly of the Mars base using TEL robots. Employing an automated system with assembly robots on Mars is a prudent decision due to the considerable time delay in transmitting commands from Earth to Mars and receiving feedback. Leveraging TEL robots for real-time assembly from Mars orbit streamlines the process by capitalizing on the speed of light for communication. The synchronous orbit station, potentially a starship or a replaceable component, plays a critical role in this plan. Its adaptability allows for component replacement whenever necessary. Any potential issues arising during ground station assembly could prompt a return to Earth given the deployment of the ground station. However, the pivotal moment arrives after the assembly completion signifying the commencement of the crew's journey to the Mars Ascent vehicle. This vehicle encompasses both raw materials and cargo, ensuring system redundancy to address any potential issues with either Mars Ascent vehicle without compromising astronaut safety. Lastly, but unequivocally significant, the proposed inflatable habitat features a sophisticated carbon composite structure, an engineering marvel that seamlessly harmonizes strength with flexibility. The carbon composite inner 
framework stands as the bedrock of the habitat, offering unwavering support while accommodating potential shifts in the ever-changing Martian environment. A cornerstone of the design is the incorporation of radiation shielding, a paramount feature crucial to safeguarding the safety and well-being of future Martian inhabitants. The outer layer of the habitat, strategically cocooned in regolith, acts as an impenetrable shield, fortifying its defense against cosmic rays and other environmental adversities. Additionally, reflective mirrors adeptly installed on both sides serve a dual function, warding off radiation while harnessing and channeling natural light to brighten the interior living quarters. A distinguishing hallmark of the surface habitat design is its remarkable redundancy and adaptability, fortifying its resilience against unforeseen challenges and exigencies. Embodying a triad of entrances, comprising a primary entry and two supplementary portals, the design seamlessly paves the way for future modular additions, ensuring the habitat's fluid evolution in sync with the burgeoning needs of the Martian settlement. This remarkable adaptability not only prolongs the habitat's operational span, but also embodies a steadfast commitment to nurturing a sustainable and forward-looking human presence on the Martian terrain. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please, let us know what you think in the comment section down below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, happy holidays and a wonderful new year.